we are back in Got Samui, our favorite island in Thailand. And for those of you who are new to our channel, Got Samui has been our home for the last two years. And since we've been gone, we've been busy traveling to Vietnam and the Philippines. We've noticed that a lot has changed. A lot of new places are opening, a lot of markets are reopening. So today, join us as we take you to our new favorite spot for coffee on the island and visit the highest standing Buddha in the mountains and also end our day with some street food at the busiest night market in Samui. I stand by you when you're falling When the river is calling I said I love you forever We can make it together What goes up must be down There's lots of friendly faces all around What would you like? Let's Something see. cold? Yes. Oh, I think caramel macchiato. One ice americano, let's go. One caramel macchiato. <laughs> you want to go sit outside? Yes, but how about I'll grab them? Um, I'll grab the chairs over there. Can okay. we use those? Oh, but you can ask off the Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> It's really good. <laughs> and it's not expensive. I think it ranges from around 60 baht to 100 baht, mm -hmm. depending on what you choose and also what beans you choose. So this cafe is called Aqua Bika and it's located in Lam Yai Beach, which is between Menam and Nathan. It's right next to that big hill where the Four Seasons Resort is. So the cafe itself has only been open for a couple weeks and this is the family's private land because right next to the cafe there is a restaurant and they are only open after 6 p.m. but they do Thai style barbecue on the beach so we'll have to come back to try that. We're going to enjoy our coffees and enjoy the view and we'll show you the next place we're going to right after. Start to bold And I don't want to be sitting Alone in a room That just filled with my soul And so I came to this place I'm looking for a familiar face And that's when I saw you It's always nice to be back in Katsumui, isn't it? It really is. It is so beautiful here and it's extra exciting this time because there are lots of new places that popped up so we have more places to explore. Yeah, just like this place. This is now probably one of my favorite coffee shops on the island. We're also excited to go check out the temple we're going to next. It's a landmark in Gasamui. It is like the highest point on the island, but we somehow have not been there yet because we've always been putting it off thinking that it's a bit steep, it might be dangerous going up, but today we are going to take you guys there and show you what that looks like too. We're gonna make it there for the first time. <laughs> So we're 
here at the temple now but it was a rough ride to come up as you could tell and i don't think a normal moped would have made it up here mm -hmm. then you need like a dirt bike or a more powerful bike or if you're not confident riding a bike mm -hmm. it's better to hire a taxi or a 4x4 truck it's yeah. safer that way <laughs> yeah it was it was pretty scary i have to admit but here we're now at this temple and it is called Wat Tipangon. So this is the highest standing Buddha in Samui and it just kind of looks like the Buddha is in the clouds. Come over here, check out the view. Wow, look at that. <laughs> Can't believe we have never been up here <laughs> after all this time. <laughs> Perfect timing, we have about a hundred tourists just showed up on like five big 4x4 four four wheels. <laughs> <laughs> I was just about to say that this place is so peaceful. <laughs> so what did you learn from the tour guide? I was just eavesdropping on their conversation over there. So this temple is built by the Samui people. So they like put together all the money to build this tall Buddha statue here. And I think the temple is 18 years old and we are now 650 meters above sea level. Cause I haven't seen any other signs around saying like talking about the temple. So I had to eavesdrop. We just briefly spoke to the tour operators and they said that there are day tours that come up here so it's around 1500 baht a person and they take you to different landmarks in Samui so that's probably a safer option for you if you're looking to visit this temple now this place is pretty epic because you can see the whole island from here so if you look over here this is the Lingam, the south of the island over there that's where we come from uh, Menam, Chawang it's right there and over here is Lamai. Gasamui really is our favorite island. We always come back here to edit, to relax, to plan for our next adventure. We will be staying in Thailand for another couple weeks, maybe even a couple months. However, another top destination for us is Korea. So we were really excited when Rosetta Stone reached out to us asking if we wanted to learn a new language for our upcoming travels. We of course said yes because communicating with local people is a huge part of what makes our travel experiences more fun and unique. And in case you if you haven't heard of Rosetta Stone, they are experts in immersive language learning with over 25 years of experience. We have been using their app to learn Korean and most lessons are only 10 minutes long so we can easily fit in a few during the day. The speaking exercises are especially fun because you get immediate feedback on how well you're pronouncing the words or phrases and sometimes it takes us quite a few tries to get it right. Dokse. Dokse. Hinse. If you're interested in learning a new language, then click the link below for a limited time offer where you can get the lifetime subscription for only $179 instead of the normal price of $299. It also includes a 30-day no-risk money-back guarantee. Let's go eat. Are you hungry? Hekupa. What does that mean? I'm hungry in Korea. Let's go do the night market. So we're at the Wharf Samui Night Market, which happens every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday from 5 p.m. until midnight. And it has a good mix of street food and some shopping, and also there's an area where you can sit down and have some cocktails. So this used to be kind of a Friday night market, but they closed it for a couple months before we left Samui. So when we came back, we were really excited to see that they reopened and they made it instead of just one day of the week, it's now three days of the week. Now that Thailand just somewhat legalized uh, marijuana, you see all this everywhere now. Grinders, pipe, bong. And before, if you were caught smoking marijuana, what would happen? Probably go to jail, yes. There is so much local food here. You want to try something? Yeah, let's do it. I already seen a few things I want to try. There's like coconut ice cream in an actual coconut shell. I think we have that for dessert later. They also have the sticky rice in the bamboo stick. Yeah, you remember that? Kalam. Yeah, 
I feel like there are more choices in this market. Western, Thai, this and other cuisine. You sell everything. Everything. You sell oh. Thai, Italian. Oh, yes. It's sad. <laughs> Some stuff right here. <laughs> Green curry. Wow, one stop shop. Yeah. เอาผัดไทยไก่ครับผมอร่อยไหมครับ This seems like a very traditional pad Thai because look, they use uh, pickled radish. They also put uh, dried shrimp in there. This is my favorite. You have to eat it with fresh chai. Okay, once you ordered, then everyone else started coming. So now there's three orders going. <laughs> yeah, it was empty when we arrived. Do you know that Pad Thai is the Thai national dish? That Thai people don't usually eat it? <laughs> yeah, but not all Pad Thai are equal though. No. So no. this one, you have tried this one one yeah. time before and it was super delicious. Doesn't How it look good? This? 50 baht. A dollar fifty. Come on. Kapun ka. Which smoothie do you want to try? Passion fruit, mango, or coconut? You want to go something, you know, typical, or you want to go something exotic? Exotic? Like this one. <laughs> Curd and jelly. Well, okay, I've never, I've never had this before. You can probably mix it with other fruits too, like made to order. You can, you can make your own drink. <laughs> I don't know. I'm not sure. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna decide. I'm gonna have a coconut smoothie. Okay. 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 The blend. <laughs> the blend. <laughs> mm. And then you chase it with fresh chai. This is probably one of the best pad thai. Really? Yes. For real. Wow, this is actually fully loaded. Like there's a lot of chicken, a lot of egg, tofu. <laughs> Hit the spot. I've never had pad thai with um the pickled radish. And it has like a sweet taste to it. Okay, yeah, this is pretty good. Like you're right, this is this is really good. This coconut shake is also really good. And I didn't add milk, so you can try it too. Mm. Yeah, right. Only so 40 baht. Oh, you want to try those? Yeah, I want some mala. So mala is actually the Chinese style super like numbing spicy sauce. So what they have here in Thailand, they put different meats and seafood and vegetables on skewers and they're only like 10 baht each. And then they would grill them and then brush the mala sauce on them. It's like a super nice snack to uh, accompany some cold beer usually. You want spicy and not spicy? Ah, uh, spicy. We're gonna die. It's gonna be so <laughs> spicy. We always say spicy. We always die. Chandan. That looks spicy though. Yeah, that looks really spicy. The pork. Mm. So tender. And the sauce is like a little bit sweet, but it's like killer spicy at the same time. Does it make your lips or your tongue numb? Yeah, I got here. <laughs> but the spice is addicting. You have to try it. I saved you a piece. Okay. Very good. <laughs> Next. The bacon wrap mushroom. Yeah, this one looks real nice. <laughs> This one absorbs a lot of sauce. <laughs> this one's quite spicy. So it is 7.40 now and you can see how much busier this market has gotten. There are tons of people. Vendors are super busy making food now. We just had some vegetables. So I think now I'm due for some dessert. Isn't this awesome? Like it feels like normal again. No more masks. 
people are living their lives, enjoying their holidays here in Samui. Oh, so nice. This is the Bako, right? Yes, it's a Oh, they're actually not Bako. They're a traditional Thai snack that shapes like honeycomb. Oh. And they use that, um, they use charcoal to make it. Cool, let's get one of these. And this one, I want some of these ones too. So these coconut pancakes are called kanom babin and they are shredded coconut that's mixed with glutinous rice flour so they're going to be a little bit chewy. It is a very traditional snack as well. Oh my god, another YouTuber! <laughs> YouTube is in the wild. Here, I got two cameras. <laughs> <laughs> we had this pad thai dough, it was delicious. You can't yeah. be any more stereotypical <laughs> as a white person. Have a nice night, guys. Yeah. So that lovely couple is Haley and Scott from the YouTube channel called Traveling Yearbook. They are from New Zealand and they are here in Thailand making some quality content. So make sure to give them a follow. It said the best homemade in the world. But nobody's here. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's the coconut uh, ice cream in there. Oh, hi! Hello. 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 Very good. Are you? Wow. Long my man. Long one, You want to try this one? <laughs> there you go. Hey. Wow. I like that we get a drink, an ice cream, and a show. Yes. <laughs> We started the trend again. Look, more people coming because of us. Yeah, the same. Haven't been in a crowd like this in a while. Yeah, kind of fun. Yeah. This is not a very traditional way of um, serving the coconut ice cream in Thailand. Usually they put like uh, coconut sticky rice, oh, yeah, um, yeah. True. steamed mung beans, mm. and palm seeds, and roasted peanuts. But this is catering towards, towards more. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's just uh, coconut ice cream, coconut meat, and peanuts. But I like that we were able to drink the coconut juice, mm -hmm. the coconut water from it. So that was a bonus. She made this herself. Best in the world. <laughs> and it's delicious. <laughs> mm. I'm, I'm curious about this. I thought it was just like it's stale waffle. It smells nice. Does it taste like a waffle? It's like a chewy, like a chewy bread, and inside there's coconut. Oh, yeah. It does taste a little like honey, though, actually. Can I see the inside? Mm -hmm. Like shredded coconut? Yeah. It has like a little bit of a caramelized flavor. It's actually really nice. I think you like this one. Oh, it's not too sweet. Mm -hmm. good, for, good for... Good for breakfast. This one's a kanam babin. There's three different flavors mm -hmm. here. Okay. Oh, sticking to the bag already. This one is the black glutinous rice. And then this one is the pandan flavor. And this one is the original. Coconut. But they all have coconut in it. Cheers! So chewy. Not too sweet. Mm. Very coconutty and very flowery. They all taste the same actually. True. Just different colors. Mm -hmm. But still delicious. Thanks again for watching and as always, have, have a, a wonderful day. day. We'll see you in the next one. Bye bye. Bloopers! Best in the world.
<laughs> I have to say best in the world because she's holding a very big knife. And she is not afraid to use it. Yeah. You change your mind. I heard you told him to be less spicy. Well, she gave me... <laughs> She gave me the option. She's like, medium spicy or spicy spicy? So I was like, oh, medium spicy. <laughs> Chicken out. Oh, oh my god, I'm loving that. <laughs> oh, I got scared by a rope. And she dropped. Oh, snake. <laughs> I thought it was a gecko on my back. 